Greetings ladies and gentlemen and fellas from the interwebs. I'm your host this morning, DJ Ignite. I'm not really a DJ, but neither are you. And uh, I'm here today to show you episode 1.2 of my tutorial series, which is called FLST, or Fruity Loops Studio Tutorial. It sounds a bit like a drug, doesn't it? Maybe because it sounds a lot like LSD, but we won't get into that. In this episode, uh, in the last episode, we covered, we identified and explained all these things, and in this episode, we're going to talk about this and maybe a little bit about the layout of the door or digital audio workstation. So we're going to have a look at your MIDI settings, setting up your audio, general settings, and uh, project info and general information. Sorry, I just had to think about something there. So options. As I said here, uh, just before, we're going to look through MIDI, audio, general, and file settings, as well as the project info. And if you'll notice, these are under different sub-menus, like system, project, MIDI, and switches, which you can't actually click on. But if you'll notice, I'll click on MIDI settings. brings up a little settings window, which has MIDI, audio, general, file, and debug. MIDI, audio, general, file. MIDI, audio, general, file. And it's the exact same thing, just in a different tab. So, like I explained before in the previous episode, there's many different ways of accomplishing the same thing. So, um, yeah, in this MIDI setup here, I'm going to plug in my MIDI controller, which is an Akai MPK-49, which means it's a 49-key MIDI controller. I don't think it's going to work, which would be a most unfortunate for me, because I quite like it when my controller works. There we go. Select the settings that I want. Now I've just plugged it in. I don't know if you heard that little window sound going to do, uh, indicating that it's been plugged in, but nothing's shown up. What we do is we click on this rescan here. I haven't done anything by the way, and there it is. Settings, everything, and there it is. And if I press a key on here, there you go. I've got input. Uh, that's middle C by the way, and I'm making sound through the kick, which is selected as you can tell by the green light. Now that's <laughs> one of the simplest ways of getting a MIDI controller to work in a door or digital audio workstation and I haven't I didn't have to go on any settings or allocate any maximum minimum values it does it all for you um, if you're lucky enough and your controllers in here I'd select it because then it would do a lot more mapping for you uh, instead of having to assign controller settings and shit like that which you will have to do if it's not in there like I do so yeah, that's the MIDI controller or piano or whatever if you have that. In audio this is how you set up your sound or your sound card. Um, in here you can select the sound card, so my primary sound card, my Logitech uh, headphones which is what I'm using now, uh, my Realtek which is a piece of shit, and my NVIDIA HD audio graphics card Majiga. Then you'll see audio devices such as an external uh, sound card, different plug-in things, and ASIO for all. Now, I don't know if you can hear me right now, but ASIO for All is by far the most useful uh, sound, well, virtual sound card it is. And what it does is instead of getting your sound card to, this is what it looks like by the way, instead of getting your sound card to process all the sound, which sound cards can't really do that well, um, it buffers the sound and puts it gets your processor your CPU to process the sound for your sound card and then it gives it to the sound card to play out um, now this is achieved by selecting the sound card most times you'll see I'm using my Logitech G35 right now and if I go to select it it'll just give me that saying it's unavailable this is because I'm using it a program like ASIO for All wants to take full 100% control over your sound device, meaning if all you have is one sound card, like just say you have this one NVIDIA HD audio or the Realtek and that's all you have, you don't have anything else plugged in, and you go to say, yeah, I want to use that, turn it on, and it gives you that, or it gives you a little female symbol, which it, it will do, um, that means that something else is using your sound card, whether it be Steam. If you have Steam on, that will be using your sound card, so Azure won't be able to take full control over it. If you have a web browser open, or if you have iTunes, a media player, anything like that that can generate sound, that will take control, that will 
stop ASIO from taking full control over your sound card. I just realised I forgot to turn my timer on, so bear with me for just a moment. There we go. So that's what you use to create the best sound quality from FL Studio. At the same time, I'm fucking lost where I am. At the same time, you can set the buffer length. Now, because I'm using my Logitech G35s, I'm not using ASIO for all, so every time I try and play a bunch of sounds, it will uh, you'll hear a little crackling sound, and that's called an underrun. Um, yeah. Furthermore, you'll see this a uh, few little sliders here. You've got your buffer length, which is how long, uh, how much data or sound data gets processed before the sound card gets a hold of it or something like that, I'm not too sure. But it's in samples and then in milliseconds. So if I turn it all the way up to 8,192 samples, uh, that will create a 186 millisecond delay. Now if I press a key on my controller, I don't know if you can hear me pushing it down, but, and then you hear it. So you can definitely hear that uh, delay in sound. And that is because the, sam the buffer length is all the way up. If I turn it all the way down, Oh, I start getting underruns, meaning my sound card can't keep up with that. So it doesn't have the power to process uh, more sound that isn't being sub-processed or something like that. I'm not too, I'm not entirely sure, but it's something like that. So I turn it up until it stops counting. There we go. So I'm just going to show you what it sounds like if I turn it all the way down and make a sound. And that was supposed to be a kick. <laughs> Do you hear that clicking sound? That degraded sound? That's called, that is an underrun in effect. And you will get that if you, even if you use ASIO for all with a, a low buffer setting, but you have lots of sounds going on or lots of polys or voices, as you'll see in this little counter up at the top here. So we turn it up a little bit, but as a result, you get uh, more latency in your, in response. So if you're trying to record live with a controller like I do, it's gonna make it a bit difficult. But you'll always want to use ASIO for all because you'll get sick and tired of hearing those, that clicking, that clicking sound. So we'll just turn it up to 111 milliseconds. This offset percentage, I don't know what it is. You'll want to turn all these on because they try it, they might help your sound card. You also want to give your shit the prior, highest priority, include safe overloads. I don't know what any of this does. And mixer sampling. Now this is what you, every time you create a song, you want to turn down the settings to linear or six point hermit. And this is just all quality control. This is only when you're composing, and then when you finish with the song, you turn it all the way back up to 256 or 512 when you're exporting the final product. Um, in general, you've just got a whole bunch of different menus and radio buttons that you can click on and yeah. Oh, there you go, there's our odd pattern selection thing which is deemed obsolete, end quotations. Uh, file where the where all your shit gets stored by default, auto save. I'm going to get it to get it to auto save frequently and debug which you unless you're super duper computer nerd, which I am not. <laughs> I don't know what any of this means. Now you see system and then project at the bottom here. If I click on project, I've got another two. And also system and project. And then you've got project info and general settings. So you have system which is up here and project which is here. And then you've got project info and project general, which is info and general. So once again, it's the same way of, you know, multiple ways of accomplishing the same thing. In info, you can name your song, allocate a genre to it, uh, the author, which is your artist name, and uh, slap in some info about it, and even show you how much time you've spent working on it, which so far I've been recording for 30 minutes because this is the second tutorial. And then you can set the general information, like the time format, which I don't do anyways. Um, yeah, so that's it for this tutorial actually no it's not I've got another 10 minutes so I'll just quickly tell you how to change the layout of your door or digital audio workstation if you have multiple monitors um, 
you will want to utilize that second monitor by moving something over here. Now you'd think that it'd be easy as dragging it over there, but that is far from the case. If I minimize this, you'll see the FL Studio border, my Windows border with my Fraps folder, and oh, I can't actually get out of the FL Studio border and utilize the second monitor. Well, you'd think that, but because most of these things have these drop down arrows, you click on that, go to detached, and it detaches it from the FL Studio border, and oh, now I can move it over to my second monitor. Although I can't show you it on my second monitor, once it's all the way on there, you can press the this maximize window button and it will maximize to the screen that it is mostly in. And you can also do that with your library. No, you can't. I lied. <laughs> but you can do that with your piano roll. Detached. Take it out. And so if you have three monitors, you can have a piano roll just for one monitor and a playlist for just the other monitor, which is very, very handy. And I think you can even do it with your mixer, wherever that may... There it is. No, you... Oh, yes, you can. Detach. There it is. Beauty. So let's just close all these off. You can also change the background of it. If you don't like that bland grayness, you just click on it. No, you don't. You double click on it. And you have a list of different image line backgrounds. Or you can even scroll, browse around and find your own background that you want to use. Uh, and moving things around, sequencer, anything in the action bar, it's simple. You can even have an action bar down there if you really wanted to. It's pretty, pretty customizable to a certain degree. Um, you can't drag that out because there's nothing else, but you can drag it in and have a little scrolling thing. And if you have more instruments, it'll scroll further, obviously. And you can't drag it outwards either, but you can drag it inwards. Amazing. So it's very much like a regular Windows computer, but... Yeah. That's pretty much... That's pretty much it, really, for this tutorial. Now that I've fucked shit up, I'm just going to quickly put this back together while you're watching. Excellent! Thank you for watching this tutorial. This is the end of episode 1 altogether. So 1.1 we did that, and 1.2 we did all of that. Next episode will be 2.1 and we'll be making some noise, which is the good part. So stay tuned for that, and I will see you again shortly. Farewell for now.